does a storyteller do when she comes to Little India? Join me as I spend a day in my favourite part of Singapore. Any idea what might be my first stop? I'm standing in the middle of Campbell Lane, right in the heart of Little India, and my favourite museum awaits. Welcome to the Indian Heritage Centre. This museum traces the history of the Indians and South Asian communities in the Southeast Asian region. I have told stories here since its opening in 2015 and I love bringing all my friends and visitors here. Let me take you inside the galleries and let me show you some of my favourite artefacts. Here we are at the permanent gallery on level 4 and this is Arevan, one of the gods closely related to the epic of the Mahabharata, one of the longest stories that I tell. It is said that Arevan sacrificed himself to the goddess Kali to ensure the victory of the Pandavas over the Kauravas during the mighty battle that took place in the Mahabharata. Let's move on to the next artifact. This is Nandi, the celestial bull. And according to mythology, Nandi is Lord Shiva's loyal servant. Nandi is associated with the first cattle on earth, which helped mankind grow crops by ploughing the fields, carrying grains and providing natural fertiliser. Little India and Sarangoon Road have a long history with the cattle trade. This area used to be a hub for cows and buffalo. There were dairy farms, milkmen and bullock carts that transported goods. When I was a little girl, I would come to Little India with my grandfather, and he was a storyteller too. We would come here to do our provision shopping at P. Govindasamy Pillay stores. And afterwards, my grandfather's favourite thing to do was to eat. Kamala Villas was one of the restaurants that we would come to for a delicious banana leaf meal. Before I have lunch, I need to get some flowers and fruits for a very special visit. Let's go to the nearby flower shop and fruit stall. This is Jyoti's and it was founded in the early 1960s and I remember coming here as a little girl with my grandfather. Today, I'm going to buy some flower garlands and also some grass garlands, especially for Lord Ganesha. I'll be going to the temple later today and I need to bring some offerings. And flowers are the most common offerings. Let me select some fruits for the temple. I want some bananas for Lord Hanuman, the monkey god, and some pomegranates and also some guavas. I think now is the right time for me to break for lunch. Let me see if I can find a banana leaf restaurant. I'm here at Village Curry Restaurant at the corner of Kerbau Road and Belilios Lane and I'm about to dig into a banana leaf lunch. But before that, take a look at what's behind me. A beautiful painting, a wall mural by my friend Yip Yu Chong. I have my banana leaf here and my food is placed on it. There is rice, papadum, pickles, vegetables and I am going to eat with my hands. When you finish eating a banana leaf meal, always remember to fold the leaf towards you and carry it to dispose of it. Now that lunch is over, let's go for a walk along the streets of Little India and explore some wall murals painted by my artist friends. This is Mayura by Boon, and Mayura in the Sanskrit language means peacock. The peacock is the vahana or the divine vehicle for Lord Murugan 
and Lord Murugan is worshipped during the festival of Thai Pusam that usually takes place in January. This is one of the tallest murals that you can find in Little India and it's called Traditional Trades by Saifol. This mural shows us some of the earliest tradesmen and women and the work that they did. This is the dobi or the washermen and women who laundered clothes. Here we have the garland makers, here we have the milkmen and this is the astrologer with this parrot bird that picks the card with your fortune written on it. And here we have the snacks and sweets seller. Talking about snacks and sweets, Little India is famous for delicious sweet meat. I must remember to get some for my children and myself, of course. Let's walk a little bit more so I can show you some more artwork that's around Little India. As a storyteller, I tell a lot of Indian folk tales and myths. Similarly, traditional Indian dance, Bharatanatyam, also tells stories through movements and through gestures. This mural on Upper Dixon Road is by Didier Jabba Matthew and it's called Kataka, named after the Kathakali dance tradition. The word Kata means story and Kathakali means story play or a story dance. I have one last mural to show you and it's one of my favourites because it has cows in it. This is Cattle Land by Eunice Lim and you can find it at Kerbau Road. Remember Nandi, the celestial bull at the Indian Heritage Centre and the connection of cattle to the Sarangoon Road area? Well, this mural pays homage to history of this place and the animals that played an important role in its development. Right, it's now time for me to go to the temple. We are at the Sri Srinivasa Perumal Temple in Sarangoon Road, one of the oldest temples in Singapore. And always remember to remove your footwear before you enter a temple. Sri Srinivasa Perumal is an avatar of Lord Vishnu, and the eagle bird Garuda is his vahana or vehicle. And these are his two consorts. The Gopuram or the tower of this temple has various depictions of the many many incarnations of Lord Vishnu. This temple is a starting point for the procession during the festival of Taipusam. And this is where the devotees start carrying the Kavadi and walk all the way to the Murugan temple in Tank Road. Let me show you Hanuman the monkey god that appears in the Ramayana epic that I tell. Hanuman, as a child, thought that the sun was a ripe mango up in the sky. So he jumped up and flew upwards. But the god of heaven got worried and he threw a thunderbolt at the little monkey child. Poor Hanuman fell down to earth. But not to worry, all was well. Hanuman woke up and he was fine. But he had a scar from that fall, a scar right here on his chin, which is why his name Hanuman means broken chin. So I finished my prayers and offerings to Hanuman, so now is the perfect time to go get some snacks and sweets. We're here at Little India Arcade. This group of shop houses were built in 1913 and symbolizes the spirit of merchants and traders who were the early settlers here. I'm here to buy some Indian sweets and my first stop is Mughal Sweet Shop. And I'm going to get some gulab jamun soaked in sugary sweet syrup, some coconut candy in pink and green colors, some jalebi all golden and delicious. Can you tell me what this is? This is kesari. Uh, this is madin, uh, suji, suji flower, and sugar, and kesari powder, which means uh, lemon powder. Now that I have stocked up on sweets, it's time for some savoury snacks. My grandmother, she would make banana crisps, also called kaya vartuda, and she would also make murku. We have different types here. And this here is called Bombay Mix, always perfect for a nighttime munchy snack. 
So I've spent a whole day here in Little India and as a storyteller, there are countless tales here waiting for you to unravel. The walls speak, the architecture and symbols tell tales, the artifacts reveal history, and the food and shops are ways for you to explore and understand our Indian culture. It's time for me to head home. I do hope you've had fun seeing Little India through the eyes of a storyteller. Do come and visit. If you have enjoyed this experience, I also have another video about Pranakan heritage and the stories within their motifs. Don't forget to watch that video. Bye-bye.